31. What is the peak EMF generated by a 0.25 meter radius, 500 turn coil, uh, is rotated one fourth of a revolution in 4.17 milliseconds, originally having its plane perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field. And by the way, this is 60 revolutions per second. All right, so that's cool. So, um, you know, uh, we can take this, or I could have taken this information too, and one fourth of a revolution and, you know, figured out that in radians per second. It really doesn't matter. Check out, by the way, the other problem, uh, number 30, if you want to see how to, you know, take this kind of information in there and, and convert it into an angular velocity. In this case, I'm just going to do a conversion because they were nice enough to give it to us. So there's going to be 60 revolutions per second. Revolutions on the bottom because we need them to cancel. Radians on the top, you know that there's two pi radians in one revolution. So that takes care of that. Revolutions go bye-bye. And now I don't want... Oh, no, I do want... Sorry, I do want radians per second. Ah, I do want that. So that's all we need to do. So there's basically going to be 120. <clears throat> you can leave it in terms of pi. It really doesn't matter. This is going to be 60 times 2 times then pi. I'm just going to get rid of the pi. This is 377. 377. Um, this is going to then be radians per second. Okay, so this is the angular velocity. Now, the reason why we needed this, right, and I'm jumping ahead because I'm doing tons of problems like this now, uh, but remember, the, the question is, what's the peak EMF, okay? And the peak EMF is given by this formula over here on the right-hand side. And you know what I've been doing to this, right? I've been saying, that doesn't make any sense, so I've been calling that V sub P for peak velocity, okay? Uh, ah, peak voltage. I'm just trying to confuse you. So peak voltage here, V sub P, is going to be equal to the number of turns of the coil multiplied by the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the external magnetic field, multiplied then by the angular velocity. That's why I'm calculating that, so I can plug it in. So now all we now need to do is basically just plug in the rest. So the number of turns they told us is 500. Cross-sectional area, oh, well, they told us the radius this time, right? And it's in meters, so we just got to take pi, multiply it by 0 0.25, and square that. So it looks like the magnetic field is missing. All right, and I think from an older version of the book, it was in there, I think it was 0.425, uh, but, you know, it ain't in here now, so uh, pick whatever value you want, but uh, I'm going to use the old one, 425, okay, 0.425, and obviously if this number changes, the whole answer is going to change, but, okay, and then we're going to multiply by that angular velocity of 377, all right, and now we just plug it on into that calculator, so take out the handy-dandy calculator and do the multiplication, okay, so 500 times then pi times then 0.25 squared, multiply by 0.425 and then times that second answer, you know, from before. So I'm getting a value of about 15.7, uh, I guess, or 1.57 times 10 to the 1, 3, 4 volts. All right. And that's then the uh, value. And again, highlight this. Be careful, whatever your value is here. Um, okay. And yeah, that's it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please help us out by subscribing. Check out some of our other videos. We got, I don't even know. 3,000 videos out there. So uh, on physics, math, chem, a whole bunch of other stuff. Take care.